And now, for our PE class, our lesson is all about qualities of an officiating official. Officials undertake an important role in the staging of competitions. They provide leadership and guidance to participants, ensuring that the competition is conducted in a safe and fair manner. Qualities such as integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, and respect are important and are integral to the role of the official. For your information, your teacher is a former semi-professional basketball official. And now, I am also looking for the chance to be a professional referee. Because officiating is one of my passion, aside from teaching. So, if you want to know about my experience, before you will be a professional official or referee, you have to know the qualities of an officiating official. Let's do the what's in. Write your answer to the following questions in your MAPE notebook. What is an official? Give five sports with officiating officials. Why do we need to have officiating officials? I will give you three minutes to answer the three questions. You can pause this video in order to answer that. Okay, now let's proceed to what's new. Answer this question in your MAPE notebook. Have you watched a sports game? If yes, imagine the characteristics you observe in an official. If not, try to ask an adult in your house. List at least five observations. You may ask your dad or your brother while watching basketball league or your sister and mother while watching volleyball tournament. For what is it? Qualities of an officiating official. Here we go, guys. Focus, listen, and understand. The role of an official is very crucial in a sporting endeavor. He defines the success or failure of a certain physical activity. It is therefore necessary for an aspiring officiating official to possess a number of of qualities for him to meet the goal of having a satisfying complaint free impartial and successful game the following are some of the qualities to be considered are you ready guys to know the qualities of an officiating officials let's go so we have physical qualities emotional qualities mental qualities and social qualities kindly repeat Okay, let's proceed to physical qualities. These qualities refer to the physical attributes of an officiating official. Since an officiating official needs to catch up with every detail of what the athletes or players do on the court, he needs to have a high level of fitness to be able to perform his job. To determine his level of fitness, he or she has to consider the following. Physical fitness. It has been defined and preceding modules in physical education that physical fitness is the capacity of an individual to perform his or her daily tasks without a due fatigue and still has extra energy for recreation and emergencies. Take note of the word extra energy for recreation and emergencies. Physical fitness is not achieved overnight. One must work on elevating his own level of fitness. If he or she has to perform better in his chosen field of endeavor, several ways to determine one's fitness which are based in improving it include body mass index, PMHR and THR, your pressure mile, 
maximal heart rate and training heart rate. Remember, the moderate intensity and the vigorous intensity computation in our previous lesson, that is it. Fitness or excessive program, nutrition and weight management. Alright, so now, I will give introduction for you for our physical fitness. Okay, before proceeding to our activity here in qualities of a good official, I will introduce to you the physical fitness test or the revised physical fitness test. Of so here is the definite order from the revised physical fitness test manual. You can pause this video to read what's all about this. So here are the guidance and guidelines of performing physical fitness tests. Now, you remember the part Q and Q during our pre-assessment? So this is the example of that. The part Q and U. Remember that seven question that you answer yes and or no? That is it. All right. So, let's talk about this. The physical fitness manual shall serve as a guidebook for teachers who handle physical education, subject so as to be guided with proper procedures and executory activities. So, me as your teacher will guide you in performing physical fitness tests even you at home. So, your parents or elder sister or brother will guide you because they have experience already taking this physical fitness test during their high school and college. The revised physical fitness test manual. Okay, so read the introduction before undertaking the physical fitness test. So the PFT is a set of measures designed to determine a student's level of physical fitness. It is intended to test two categories of physical fitness, commonly referred to as health-related and skill-related. Remember that during your past grade level year? The health-related components. The person of physical attributes which enable a person to cope with the requirements of daily living such as cardiovascular endurance or stamina. Muscular strength and endurance, flexibility, and appropriate body mass index or the BMI. Skill-related components are physical abilities that show potential for good performance in certain skills. Usually in sports like running speed, Agility, reaction time or quickness, balance, and coordination. Okay? In determining the level of health-related and skill-related fitness status, several test items are applied. These tests were specifically selected to suit various conditions existing in school, such as the time it takes for a test to be completed. Availability of equipment and facilities. Ease and simplicity in administering the test. Easy recording of test results. Challenging yet joyful. Participation among pupils and everyone involved in the program. So remember the letter B. Okay, If the facilities and equipment is available, you can do the fitness test. But if you don't have that, just message me as your teacher or PE teacher. The administration and implementation of testing program shall be treated as an essential component of the physical education and school sports program for both elementary from grade 4, 5, 6, junior and senior high school. So this is the test objectives. Number one, to determine the level of fitness of students. So as we go through to our physical fitness test, we can determine the level of your fitness. Number two, identify strength and weaknesses for development and improvement. We can identify in what fitness you are strong and you are weak. So we can know what will be our developmental activities to improve those weaknesses. Number three, to provide baseline data for selection of physical activities for enhancement of health and skill performance. We can use our data in order to develop your physical activities and enhance your health and skill performance if you are an athlete in your school or a simple student. Number four, to gather data for the development of norms and standards. Five, last, to motivate guide and counsel pupil students in selecting sports for recreation, competition, and lifetime participation. So we can suggest 
okay? After the fitness test, in what sports you are belong or you have the potential to join. So, before we take our physical fitness test, we have to follow the test protocol. First bullet, explain the purpose and benefits that can be derived from the physical fitness test. Number two, administer the test at the beginning of the school year and at the start of the next semester to monitor improvement progress. Number three, prepare the following testing for a pernalia. So if you have your first aid kit, you have to prepare that in case of emergency or injury. Number two, drinking water. Okay, so prepare at least one bottle of water for yourself, a bimpo to wipe your perspiration. Okay, for your proper hygiene. Number three, individual scorecards properly filled up for distribution to students. Later, I will show you your individual scorecards or you can look for that in our Google Classroom. Four, during testing, body composition. Okay, read the materials. Letter B, flexibility. Letter C, cardiovascular endurance. Letter D, muscular strength. Aside from those materials, if you don't have, you can modify them or you can find another materials that is like with that material. Like for example, if you don't have stopwatch, you can use your cell phone, okay, with stopwatch menu. So if you don't have a step box, you can use the stair. If you don't have mats, you can use stack of rice or your beddings. Letter E, speed. Letter F, power. Letter G, agility. Letter H, reaction time. Letter I, coordination. Letter J, balance. So, you have to observe the following prior to actual day of testing. Number one, the testing station should be safe and free from obstruction. I know we are staying at home, so before you undergo your physical fitness test, make sure there's no children at your side to avoid accident. Number two, the same equipment as testing station should be used in the start of the year testing and subsequent testing. Number three, with the guidance of the teachers or your parent or your elder brother or sister, Okay, allow the students to go to with the various tests with minimal effort exerted to familiarize themselves with testing procedures. Four, the test requiring cardiovascular endurance and those other tests which involve the same muscle group should not be taken in succession. Okay, so I will show to you the suggested sequence of administering the test. For day one, you get your BMI, the height and weight, and the calculation of that, then the three-minute step test. For the day two, you can do the basic plank, okay? The multimeter sprint, I think uh, you don't have the facilities with that. You don't have oval, your own oval at your home. So you can do push up, then the stick drop test, and the sit and reach. For the day three, you can do hexagon agility, the juggling test, the standing long jump, the stoic balance, and the zipper test, okay? So you don't have to do the 40 meter sprint, okay? Make sure, guys, again, we don't have to go outside to do the 40 meter sprint, okay? So it's understandable for you to not do that kind of fitness test, the 40 meter sprint. Next. Thank you for watching. God bless everyone, okay? So that is our introduction for our physical fitness test. Now let's go back to our present lesson, the qualities of a good P-shop. So this is the physical qualities, as we said. He must have physical fitness or good physical qualities. Emotional qualities. Mental qualities and social qualities. For the emotional qualities, this quality refers to the emotional readiness of an official, officiating official, to perform his or her 
role in a game. He or she might have mastered all the rules and possess a high level of fitness. But if he or but if the emotional aptitudes don't warrant him or her to perform the duties and responsibilities of an officiating failure is expected. Emotional attitudes that an official should possess include confidence. So remember the word include confidence. So for your emotional qualities of a good official, the official must include good confidence. It's having a belief in oneself. Confidence can be situation specific but practicing it through actual game immersion, observation of game officiating activities can help improve it. Now let's go to mental qualities. So mental qualities is very important for the official develop. Just as a physical and emotional qualities are essential, mental characteristics are also equally necessary. Mental toughness in the term used to refer to all of the qualities pertaining to one's mental preparation in officiating a game. I remember this word, mental preparation in officiating a game. This is very important. Like for us in basketball game, before as we get our assignment that we are going to officiate a game, we have to prepare ourselves physically and mentally. Okay? Why? To be mentally tough, it requires one to stay focused, regulate one's performance, ability to handle pressure, awareness, and control of thoughts and feelings, and one's command and control of the environment. This can be achieved by having a thorough knowledge of the rules of the game, alertness, vigilance, which result in timely, decisive, honest and impartial judgment. Decisiveness results in the integrity of the result of the game, leading to a satisfying result, access, acceptance of success and failure for either com competing teams or players. So I remember the time when I officiating games from the semi-pro league, okay? There much, there's so much pressure. Why? Because aside from my choreography, the spectator and coach, I have the, my supervisor and the commissioner watching my performance during the game. So I have to handle pressure, so I train myself, I prepare myself mentally and physically. And last but not the least, social qualities. Okay? If the official have physical, emotional, and mental qualities, social qualities is also a must. Why? Let's go. Social qualities refer to the ability to deal with others in any given situation. Complaints are inevitable in a game. It is the ability of an officiating officials to settle disputes without sacrificing the integrity of a game and the officiating team. To develop such qualities requires practice just as the emotional qualities do. Surrounding oneself with people who make wise decisions, especially in officiating endeavors, might help one improve his or her decision making skills yes yeah, social qualities is very important on how you deal with the social dispute or the uh settle disputes without sacrificing the integrity of your game and your co-officials so that is it again let's repeat the qualities we have the physical qualities we have the emotional qualities mental qualities and social qualities so let's proceed to our activity. What's more? Do the following activities in Mapping Notebook. What are the four major qualities of an official for each quality? Give at least two situations that will promote the qualities. Okay? So we have the four appreciating or the four major qualities. So you give situation for every qualities, for physical qualities, emotional qualities, mental qualities, and social qualities. Okay, you can pause the video while answering this on your notebook. Alright, let's move to our next activity.
So what you have learned or what I have learned. So qualities such as integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, and respect are important and are integral to the role of officials. Following are the qualities of sports officials. So all you have to do is to explain about the statement you have heard or you have read. What can you say about those sentences from number one to six? Okay, next, what I can do? Considering the previous readings on the qualities of an officiating official, draw your ideal officiating. Official in your MAPE notebook. Draw and color your ideal appreciating official. Put at least eight arrows around your drawing and write the best qualities of an appreciating official. Assessment. So answer this on your notebook. It's only 10 items. So let us read. From number one. So write true or false. Write your answer in your mapping notebook. This is 15 points rather, not 10. Number one. Sports official provide leadership and guidance to participants, ensuring that the competition is conducted in a safe and fair manner. True or false. Number two. Social qualities refer to the ability to deal with others in any given situation. Mental hardiness is the term used to refer to all the qualities pertaining to one's mental preparation in appreciating a game. Decisiveness result in the integrity of the result of the game leading to a satisfying result and acceptance of success and failure for either competing teams or players. Number five, officials undertake a minor role in staging of competition. Number six, qualities such as integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, and respect is important and is integral to the role of the official. Seven, sport official define the success or failure of a certain physical activity. Physical fitness is the capacity of an individual to perform his or her daily tasks without a due fatigue and still has extra energy for recreation and emergencies. Nine. Emotional readiness is one of the qualities needed by an official to perform his or her role in a game. 10. Physical fitness is achieved overnight. 11. Nutrition and weight management is part of physical qualities. 12. PMHR means personal maximal heart rate. 13. Social toughness. Requires one to stay focused to have the capacity to regulate one's performance and to possess the ability to handle pressure. Being wise during the game and decision-making skills are under mental qualities. An official should have good moral attributes. So we have our additional activities. Using the knowledge and experience that you have gained from the previous lesson, do the given activities below in your map and notebook. Mind map activity. Review all the readings you had in the previous lesson and summarize them. Make a mind map in the lesson. Example is given below. However, it's best for you to create your own mind map. Letter B, question and answer activities. How will you rate apply to yourself following qualities in sports appreciating? For additional activity, I will put here another activity that I think you will be 
excited. Watch the game one finals. of NBL Philippines or the National Basketball League Philippines on October 22, 2020, 6 p.m. Live on NBL Philippines FB page. A. Write the scores every quarter. Letter B. Observe officials and last but not the least, let us see write your reaction. About the performance of the officials. Again, write your reaction about the performance of the officials dealing with their dealing with the good qualities of an official. Okay, again, for letter C, additional activity, watch the Game 1 Finals of NBL Philippines on October 22, 2020, 6 p.m. live on NBL every page. Write the scores every quarter, observe the officials, write your reaction about the performance of the officials dealing with the good qualities of an official. Thank you very much for listening and see you on our health day for our topic about environmental issues that affect the community. Thank you very much and God bless us all.